I want to tell you a story. Don't say oh. I want to tell you a story. It's too late. Everyone look at me. Stop talking. So this summer after camp was over, Maria and I and the boys stayed at the camp for about three weeks to kind of like relax. And during that time is the feast day of St. Dionysius, the summer feast day of St. Dionysius on August 23rd. And so Kotz and I went over to Zakynthos with thousands of other people. And what they do is they have this Vespers and they bring, literally they stand the body up of the saint up and they bring him out into the church and they bring him around, if you saw my Insta story, they bring him around and then they put him up for people to venerate. The next morning they have the Divine Liturgy on the feast day of St. Dionysius. And then that night there's another Vesper service. And so we go to the Vesper service and they're like, okay, you have to wear all your vestments and it's a very special service. And there are hundreds of thousands of people. And so we go and they take the body of the saint, just like we just did at Easter, right? Where they take the Kuvuglin or the Epitaphia, where they put it on their shoulders and they walk around the parking lot or around your neighborhood. They take the saint standing up and they put these sticks on these carriers on both sides and these priests take the body of the saint and they are, we go literally probably two miles all the way down to the end of the port and all the way back. It takes like two hours. And, the, and people are watching and we're walking through the streets and people are following. And so there's like probably 40 priests. And at one point, the chancellor of the metropolis, he turns to me, he's like, in Greek, he says, okay, it's your turn. And I didn't think I was gonna like get to be a part of it because like I'm the little kid, American kid and you know, they're all like, shit, I'm like, I keep whipping out my, I got yelled at for whipping out my phone and taking pictures. Um, he's like, what are so he's like, okay, it's your turn. So I went and they put the body of the saint down and I got under my left shoulder and I went to lift it up. And while I was walking with the, the saint on my shoulder, he's like right here. I was thinking of all of you. And I was thinking about the summer that we had just had. And I was thinking about your staff members who dedicated their summer to you. And I was thinking about the transformation that I saw in so many of you, that I personally saw in so many of you from the day you arrived to the day you left. And it was remarkable. And it only lasted for maybe 12 minutes, 15 minutes, that I walked along that strip, and then we stopped, and then other priests came along. But it was one of the probably high points of my entire life was being that close to St. Dionysius and carrying him literally on my shoulder. I always get nervous at the reunion because I don't really know what more I can say to you. I spoke to you every night for 20 nights at camp. And some of you were in my OL cabins. And some of you I had to talk to outside of OL. Uh, everybody's happy. <laughs> but I always wonder, come around this time, what I can offer you, what more, what lasting thing I can offer you. And it literally wasn't until two minutes ago that it all, I put it all together. And I don't really know how I missed it, and I'm kind of surprised. But I told you the other night, last night, seems like it was a long time ago. I told you last night that when you came to camp at the white party, I told you, Ionian Village is an invitation to live your life in a different way. It's an invitation to live your life with Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That's up to you. Your prayer life, your spiritual journey, your connection with God, those things are up to you. And so then tonight I was thinking, and as literally as I was standing there, you guys were all going crazy on the dance floor, and I was going crazy up there, I was listening to the words of the song. And it says, what do you do when a chapter ends? Do you close the book and never read it again? Where do you go when your story's done? 
You can be who you were or who you'll become. This chapter tonight, this 2017 IV chapter of your life, it's officially closed tonight. Now you move on to something else. I will always be there for you. Whether I see you in the East Coast or in the Tri-State area, whether you reach out to me and text me or message me, whether I see you at events when I travel, I will always be there for you. But I'm not gonna be there like I was at camp. I'm not gonna be there every day to tell you and encourage you to make sure you get to chapel, and make sure you pray before you eat, and make sure you pray after you eat, and to make you go to the bathroom in groups of three. I'm not going to be there for that. If you want to do that at a college, I encourage you. I try to give you something. You might think that everything that we do at Ivy is a little bit weird, and is a little bit structured, and is a little bit crazy, but there's a purpose. Yeah, we pray a lot. And I don't expect you to pray that much. But I do expect you to pray somewhat. I do expect you, when you move on, to take something from this chapter of your book. You'll be who you were, or you'll be who you become. It is solely 100% up to you now. You will rely on your cabin mates, you will rely on your staff, you can rely on me, you can rely on all of the other people in this family, but at the end of the day, whether or not you have a relationship with Jesus Christ is your decision, your call, your choice. I care for you. I love you. And I know it doesn't seem like it because I love making fun of you. But I love you. I love each and every one of you. I loved you when you were at camp and I've been waiting for you for nine months to get here to tell you that I love you and that I've missed you and that every day I've been praying for you. It's your responsibility now to decide whether or not you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled by what you hear and think that church isn't important and faith isn't important and the church isn't important and religion isn't important. You may not agree with everything the church says. That's fine. I don't. You may not understand everything the church says. That's fine. I don't. You may be angry at the church. That's fine. I've been. But whatever's going on with the church and theology and religion and your home parish or your priest or your goya or your whatever as you grow up, that's different from your relationship with Jesus Christ. I told you at camp, have a conversation with Christ. The same way that so many of you have pulled me aside this weekend and said, hey, I want to talk to you. Hey, I want to tell you this. Hey, listen to no, no. Have that conversation with Jesus Christ. Have a prayer life. I don't care if it's once a week, dude. Have a prayer life. And know that Jesus Christ is there for you. You are going to a part of your time. You are going to a time of your life where you will be lonely, or sad, or angry, or frustrated, or even depressed. Jesus Christ is always there for you. When you lose friends, when you lose family, when you feel betrayed, when you're sad, when you're happy, when you're angry, when you're mad, Jesus Christ is always there for you. Even when you don't want him to be, and you don't feel his presence, Jesus Christ is there for you. I love you, and because I love you, 
I expect you to be great people. I expect you to be amazing people as I watch you grow. I expect you to be leaders in the community, leaders in the church, leaders at your school. I expect great things of you because I know what you're capable of, each and every one of you. I know you are capable of amazing things. So yes, I won't be there every day to tell you to do your prayers and to do your cross before you eat. But know that Jesus Christ loves you each and every minute of each and every day. And that you are capable of the most amazing things. Let's pray. Yeah. 